Hi folks, in this video I want to go through the process of trying to fix um, a TV, in this case it's a Toshiba, um, good TV, paid about £130 for it a couple of years ago, but after a while it decided to stop functioning. One moment it was playing, next moment it just went off. Biggest problem with this type of TV is um, on the, the power supply, the red light just disappears, goes off, and you think, what on earth's happened? First thing you need to do, of course, is to check to make sure that the, um, the fuses are all okay um, on, the, uh, on the cable. This, this particular TV was mounted on a wall and had um, um, a, an extra uh, length of cable put onto it but all the fuses were checked um, externally and still nothing happened. So what did I do? Well, first thing you've got to do is to get into the TV. So you've got to have a look on the back and have a look and see where all the screws are to get the back off. On this particular TV there are at least uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10 screws, well 11 screws if you include that one, that you need to take off. So while I do this, here's a bit of music. Right, all of the screws seem to be out. Maybe I should get that one out. It's a lot easier if you have a screwdriver that's got a bit of a metallic end on. Unfortunately, I picked the wrong one up from the workshop. This one hasn't, but I've managed to get all the screws out. So, next case is to take this back off. It can be a bit stiff at times, but if you persevere, you can actually um, take the back off. Basically what happens is it's the front bezel that needs to come off and you've just got to be very careful and work your way around making sure you don't break your fingernails to actually get into it. Sometimes you think that's making an awful noise but it is working. There you go final crack and it comes off. So let's take the, the back off and see what's inside. And of course when you've put the thing back down it locks up again so let's take this off again. Sometimes it's a good job to put a flop blade just to help the little plastic lugs to come out. That's it. Okay. Now this particular one you've got to make sure you can get the cable out. So there's a little cable holder here which I've just taken off. And the cable will just thread through. Be very careful how you actually open these things because there may be cables hiding. So in this particular case, the only cable that's connected is the power cable and also to the DVD. Now then, on first looking at it, you're thinking, what on earth is in this TV? There's very little. Let's just see if we can zoom in a little bit. There you go. Two boards. In this particular case, it's this one here is the power supply, and this is the brains behind the whole TV. So, first thing I'm going to do is to unplug the little connector just to give me a bit more freedom. There you go, and that allows me to uh, see it a bit better. In this case, this particular board here 
is used in many, many TVs. It's the 17IPS61, and this one's the um, Mark III version, the hyphen 3. One big thing that I should have said before we actually started was to make sure that this is not connected to the mains, which obviously this one isn't because we've unplugged it. And you may be thinking, what sort of plug is this? It's actually a European plug because this was in my holiday home, which I had to bring home. <coughs> so on first looking, you have a look at the particular board and we'll uh, just have a quick zoom in on this one. So we look at the, the particular power board itself, the power supply, and first thing we do, you do a visual check first of all to see if most common problems with anything to do with um, power supplies is to check the capacitors. All the capacitors and have a look to see whether or not the tops have beveled out. Classic tale of the capacitor gone dead. And all of these seem okay. There is um, a couple of inbuilt fuses um, on this uh, on this particular system. Well, actually, one I can see straight away. Make sure we're in focus, and that one. So I'll be checking to make sure that that is um, okay when we uh, take it into the the workshop. Um, like any good workshop, I'm actually doing this on our living room table uh, with the uh, the wife um, not being in the room just in case it scratches, but I have got a nice um, protective layer on the top, just because the workshop is in a little bit of a mess at the moment. So I'm now going to take out the power supply, which means I've got to undo this cable. This automatically comes off. Uh, four screws, one, two, three, four. They just need taken off, and then the power supply will be out, and we can do a bit more testing um, to see what the problem is. Okay folks, so I've now gone into the uh, the workshop, uh, unfortunately <laughs> the uh, the workshop is in a bit of a, um, a mess, I've um, got various projects on the go, um, this is what happens when you uh, like to mess around with uh, uh, electronic um, uh, projects and I've got a little bit of space so I can, uh, I can actually have a look and see what's happening. So, first thing I want to do is to check is to make sure that um, the fuses are okay. So as I said, where are we at? Let me see that one there. Oops, let's get this bit on focus. That's better. So this here is um, a fuse that's inbuilt. So straightforward, let's just turn it over. So we're looking between those two points there, that point and that point and I'm just going to put the uh, the multimeter um, on and let's just put the multimeter in focus there you go not a very expensive multimeter something which I got from a local uh, um, uh, uh, supplier um, actually it was screw fricks a uh, very good price and it works quite well Right, so I've just checked the uh, the fuse. Fuse is okay. So, fuse one, that is fine. As I say, we did a cursory look when we were uh, just down on the uh, the table, and looking at all of the uh, capacitors, everything looks okay. Doesn't seem to be anything. Um, as if it's burnt or anything like that. Nothing seems to have been getting hot. So we can assume it's probably going to be one of the most common problems on this type of board, which is to do with the diodes. This one, this one, this one, and this one. So what we can do now is we can do a quick check. Um, we can put the... Uh, 
um, the uh, multimeter onto um, doing the uh, check for um, the diodes itself. So let's uh, just have a look and see which ones we're going into. And let's see, so if we work on this one, first of all, we've got 688. Go the other way around. We've got 352. Okay, let's try this one. Oh dear. Zero. That doesn't sound too good. Zero on there. That definitely doesn't sound too good. Oh, and that's another one that's zero. And again, zero. 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 So, what we will probably do is, definitely these three are um, not working correctly. That one possibly is working, but it's better to be safe and just replace all of these diodes. And they can be replaced um, quite easily um, by uh, uh, finding a supplier, uh, which, which I can actually supply these. And you can find the link uh, at the uh, end of the video as to how to obtain these to, uh, to replace them. Uh, it's going to be a very, very cheap fix, this. Um, and it should work straight away. Normally, if this doesn't work, then um, we've checked all of the normal things. You're starting to look at um, things like um, some of the discrete components, the ICs. And really, it starts getting a bit more complicated to, uh, to find out which... Uh, which ones are actually at fault. Sometimes, if it's not these um, diodes that are at fault, then it's easier to try and find a replacement for the, the whole board, which again, you can normally pick up quite uh, quite cheap. Um, because like I said at the beginning of the video, the board itself is a very, very common power supply board, which is used in many, many um, TVs and other um, um, electrical uh, devices so you can normally pick them up either a refurb one um, at a very reasonable cost but it's still a lot cheaper to try and replace these devices first then to replace the board and then finally if uh, you don't feel confident in this then unfortunately you need to buy yourself a new TV so what I'm going to do is I'm going to unsolder these devices and replace them with um, uh, some new devices so, I'm not going to show you how to unsolder everything, but uh, I'll uh, I'll just unsolder these, and then we'll uh, we'll continue on. And after checking with the multimeter, we're getting a better reading now. So what I'm going to just do, just to prove that uh, the diodes were at fault, at, at uh, fault, let's just put it on here. See what uh, see what these actually come in as. Now that 
that was the diode which I said looked OK and it does seem to be OK. Now that one seems OK. A bit low, but it seems OK the reading. Oh dear. That doesn't sound very good at all. No, that one definitely for the bin. So, after replacing all of them, it seems like this is the only one that was actually at fault. Into the TV now. Supposed to blow the bloody doors off. 